Sea Lampreys in the Great Lakes by Kelly Kleister and Matt Kershaw. So what are sea lampreys, you might ask? Sea lampreys are a primitive jawless fish. They have a large sucking disc for a mouth filled with sharp teeth that surround a file-like tongue. The body has smooth, scaleless skin and two dorsal fins. There is no lateral line, vertebrae, swim bladder, or paired fins present. Some lamprey stats. They can grow from anywhere between 12 and 20 inches. They can weigh 8 to 13 ounces. They are gray-blue back, metallic violet on the sides, shaded into silver white underneath. Some common names are great sea lamprey, lake lamprey, lampreys, and lamprey eels. The scientific name is Petromyzon marinus. In their natural habitat, they're ocean fish that spawn in fresh water. They're native to the coastal regions of both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. Invaders of the Great Lakes Originally, Niagara Falls served as a natural barrier to sea lampreys, but they entered through the, to the Great Lakes system in the 1800s through man-made locks and shipping channels, the first one being the Whaling Canal, which was built in 1829. And this picture shows the migration path into the, the Great Lakes by sea lampreys, first entering Lake Ontario in the 1800s, Lake Erie in 1921, Lake Huron in 1932, Lake Michigan in 1934, and finally Lake Superior in 1938. Some issues that arose from the introduction of sea lampreys into the Great Lakes are the ecological impacts. One sea lamprey can upset an ecosystem and food chain by eating an estimated 40 pounds of fish or more in its lifetime. There was roughly 22,000 lamprey estimated to be in the Great Lakes, so multiply that times 40 pounds, and that's a lot of fish Direct predation, they attach themselves to other fish and suck on their blood and other body fluids. This leaves scars on fish and can kill them. The picture on the left shows a fish that was caught while it was still alive and the lampreys are feeding on its body. The picture on the right shows two dead fish found by a park ranger with lamprey scars and wounds. The effects of, on Great Lakes fisheries. Sea lampreys didn't evolve naturally with Great Lake fishes, and because of this, they have a strong advantage on, over the native fish they prey on because they're very aggressive and have a high predaceous behavior. They prey on all species of large Great Lakes fish, such as trout, salmon, and whitefish. The invasion of lampreys has greatly impacted the population of these fishes. Before their spread, the U.S. and Canada harvested about 15 million pounds of lake trout in the upper Great Lakes each year. By early six, 1960s, the catch was only about 300,000 pounds. This graph shows a dramatic decrease in lake trout once lampreys entered the lakes. Today, the fishery is worth up to $4 billion annually to the people of Canada and the United States. Nearly 5 million people fish the Great Lakes annually, and the fisheries support tens of thousands of jobs. So what's being done about the sea lampreys? There's many different control methods being used to try to minimize the sea lamprey impacts in populations. There's an assessment method where biologists go into the field and determine which streams contain sea lamprey larvae. This assessment data is then used to help the commission decide which streams to treat for sea lampreys. The assessment of adult spawning populations is also carried out to measure the lake-wide sea lamprey populations and to assess the overall success of the sea lamprey control programs. There's also lampricide. Tributaries with larval sea lampreys are periodically treated with lampricides to eliminate or reduce the populations of larvae before they become parasitic adults. Currently, the primary method to control sea lampreys is the use of a lampricide TFM. This kills sea lamprey larvae in streams with little or no impact on other fish and wildlife. TFM is not harmful to humans or other mammals at the concentration it's applied, and it is registered as a lampricide with the U.S. EPA and Health Canada. Another control method are lamprey barriers. Barriers have been constructed to block the upstream migration of spawn and sea lampreys. Most barriers allow other fish to pass with minimal disruption. Barriers have reduced or eliminated altogether lampricide treatment on many streams. There's also lamprey traps. Traps are operated at various locations through the Great Lakes, often in association with barriers. 
They're designed to catch lampreys as they travel upstream to spawn. Male lampreys caught in the traps are used for the sterile male release technique. Most females are just used for research. Sterile male release. It aims to reduce the success of sea lamprey spawning. Each year, male sea lampreys are collected and sterilized. Only spawning sea lampreys are used in the sterile male release technique. Spawning sea lampreys, including the sterile males, are past their parasitic phase, and that is they no longer prey on the Great Lake fish and die after the spawning run. So what are the results of these methods? Overall, the sea lamprey control program has been tremendously successful. Although lamprey populations fluctuate like any species, ongoing control efforts have resulted in a 90% reduction of sea lamprey populations in most great areas of the Great Lakes, creating a healthy environment for fish survival and spawning.